What is up guys, AshBFC here, welcoming you to my top 10 games of the year for a second year in a row now. So let's just get straight to it. Here we go, my top 10 games of 2013. So up first at number 10, a big surprise involving a game around pirates. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, yeah. And uh, I say big surprise because I wasn't expecting much from this game whatsoever. I really wasn't, because I have grown tired of this series. I really have. Ubisoft are milking it. They are releasing it every year, mobile versions, etc. Um, yeah, starting to get really fed up of it. I mean, I love the first game. Second game was amazing. Kind of downhill from there. But this one ended up being really good, hence it being on this list. Yeah, I did, I did really enjoy this one. Uh, like I said, it is a surprise. Um, I just love the whole pirate theme, to be honest. Um, I love being freaking pirate. Who doesn't? Yeah, I love all the naval combat and stuff. It's one of the few things I did like about number three. Just a ton of fun, you know, upgrading your ship and sailing the seas, attacking other ships, exploring. There's a huge scope of this game, a lot of stuff to see and do. And yeah, it just ended up being really, really fun. I think easily the best entry since uh, number two, definitely. Um, yeah, just a really, really fun game. Uh, I f the game just, I don't know, it just feels like it had more time than the others. Um, it just feels a bit more polished and stuff. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. But I do think it's a one-off. I do think it's a one-off. Uh, I'm not expecting much from Assassin's Creed 5, or whatever the hell it's gonna be called. I do think this was a one-off. But regardless, still a really fun game. So yeah, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag. And for number 9, one of the best 2D platformers I have played in quite some time. Rim and Legends, yeah, uh, just one hell of a platformer this really is. Like This is like 2D platforming at its finest. Um, I mean, I just love the graphical style of this game. So much charm, uh, brilliant music, uh, brilliant level design, uh, every single one of them. Just so much attention to detail, they just flow so nice. Ton of fun getting all your collectibles and getting the secret characters and stuff. Uh, brilliant boss fights, um, you know, great sharp fluid control. Uh, one of my favourite things being uh, the musical uh, stages where you run along and jump and stuff to the rhythm of the music. Uh, those were a very nice touch. I really like those. Um, yeah, just uh, one hell of a 2D platformer. I mean, not including Rayman Origins. I honestly think this is one of the best 2D platformers I have played since the 90s. It's that goddamn good. Uh, and I definitely think it's the best Rayman game in the entire uh, in the entire series. So. Yeah, hell of a game, Rayman Legends. And for number 8, a game I was convinced I was going to totally hate. I was so goddamn wrong. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, now as a diehard, and I do mean diehard, Metal Gear Solid fan is my favourite video game series of all time. So yeah, this game did not sit well with me at first when it was first announced. You know, Raiden main character, different developers, Kojima not writing basically polar opposite gameplay to the Sword series. So I was like, oh my god, no, no. And then I played it, and it was, oh my god, yes, freaking yes. This game is just one hell of a hack and slash. I mean, it's by Platinum Games. I should have known better, because they don't do bad games. They're one of the best right now, and this is them at their best. Just super fast paced, adrenaline fueled, chaotic, mad, crazy, freaking hack and slash gameplay. So much fun, I mean, Super brutal, super violent, most violent Metal Gear Solid ever. I mean, just hacking your enemies to pieces in slow motion from an enemy soldier to a freaking helicopter is insane. I mean, you get to chop a Metal Gear Ray in half. If that doesn't sell it to you, I don't know what will. It, it's just so much fun. It's, it's, it's so badass, this game, man. Outstanding boss fights. Like, so much fun. And a serious challenge as well, you want to get those S ranks. And the soundtrack. Oh my god, one of the best video game soundtracks ever. I actually bought it, it's that goddamn good. Yeah, just an amazing game by um, Platinum Games right here. Um, yeah, I know spin-offs normally suck for like TV shows and movies and stuff, but this is proof right here that they can work in the gaming world. So yeah, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Terrible name, awesome game. Number seven, The Italian Plumber in HD. Super Mario 3D World, I mean, it's Mario, I don't need to say a whole lot about it, do I? It's what you'd expect, just classic 3D platforming. I mean, the series has been around forever, since before I was born. Um, yeah, and it's just no brilliant entry uh, in the series. Uh, I mean, it's not as good as the Galaxy games, but I didn't expect it to be, because they've kind of set the bar probably too high 
But it's still an awesome game. I still think it's up there as one of the best Mario's. I mean, it's HD now. It's never looked better. It does look really, really nice. Great music, as you'd expect. Um, you know, typical clever level design. Uh, it's just fun throughout, you know. Keep mixing it up. Nothing sort of repetitive or anything like that. Katsu is a really fun new addition. And of course, multiplayer being one of the big things now. You can play this game with friends, and you can play as multiple characters. So no longer just Mario trying to save uh, Princess Peach, because you can play as Princess Peach. So that's a very uh, welcome addition in my eyes. And you know, it's just a ton of fun, you know. Uh, with all the fun music and um, you know getting your three green stars and your gold flags and yeah great boss fights and everything like that it's, it's just Mario man it's what you'd expect um, just another <laughs> great entry in this long running series um, and definitely the best game on the Wii U uh, by, a, by a long way so yeah you know it's Mario what can you say and at number six it's The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds for the 3DS I mean, again, like Mario, it's a series that's been going forever. I've been playing it since I was like four or five years old. Uh, I played them all, beat them all, love them all. And this one's no exception, it's just another amazing game and an amazing series. Uh, but this one's a little bit special because it is a big throwback to A Link to the Past. Uh, I mean, it's, you could even call it a remake, but uh, A Link to the Past was the first Zelda game I ever played. So a lot of nostalgia, a lot of memories right here. It was just great revisiting that Hyrule in the new graphic style, you know, going to the Lost Woods to get the Master Sword in Eastern Palace and all the music sparkle, the classic music from A Link to the, the Past is back, all remix and stuff. So that was a nice little touch. Uh, you know, just great dungeon designs, a uh, big world to explore, uh, Dark World's a ton of fun as well to go to. Um, you know, uh, good difficulty level, uh, loads of secrets and stuff, and mini games, and of course the freedom was a really nice touch as well, uh, with a whole new uh, item weapon shop where you can basically just start getting stuff straight away and do the dungeons whatever order you want, or you can go straight for heart pieces, no more sort of do this in that order and then get that, and you know, it, it's a lot more open, a lot more freedom, so that was very nice, and yeah, just another amazing Zelda game, it really is, and my favourite game on the 3DS right now. And next up at number 5, it's Tomb Raider, the reboot. Now we had a feeling this game was going to be good, I didn't think it was going to be this good, this game blew me away with how goddamn amazing it was. To me this is easily the best Tomb Raider ever made. I did enjoy some of the older Tomb Raiders, I remember back in the day as a kid um, playing like the first three and stuff on Playstation, I mean locking the butler in the freezer, best thing ever, but no this is way more my style, it's obviously and it's a very different, um, it's a lot darker and grittier and it's pretty goddamn brutal, I mean some of the ways you can die in this game are just nasty man, being impaled through the neck. Uh, I mean, you know, all the stealth sequences are a ton of fun. Um, the shooting, the platforming, the puzzles and stuff. Uh, you know, all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Uh, it's, it's very, it's a, it's a lot like Uncharted. It borrows a lot from Uncharted, which, you know, I think that's a good thing because Uncharted's amazing. You know, just things collapsing everywhere and explosions and stuff and Lara on her ass every five seconds. Uh, but yeah, it, absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be this good, but yeah, blew me away with how amazing it was. Like I said, I think this is easily the best Tomb Raider ever. I uh, really love this game, really did. Uh, I really hope that they'll do a sequel to this. I really do. So, yeah, Tomb Raider. And for number four, a fine example of how you do a JRPG. Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch for the PlayStation 3. Oh, God, 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 this is one hell of a JRPG. I think this is the best JRPG of the generation. Just absolutely brilliant here from level five. I mean, it's very traditional, very old school in its ways. You know, I feel like old school Final Fantasy and Dragon Warrior and stuff like that. But it also brings new stuff to the table as well. I mean, there's a heavy element of Pokemon in there with a battle system where you can capture uh, enemies and have them fight for you and you can train them up and even evolve. And these are hours and hours you can spend just, you know, testing out different enemy types. I mean, so much content, very lengthy quest, uh, great story, great characters. I mean, drippy. Drippy's worth buying this game for, just to see him, he's friggin' hilarious. Uh, brilliant music, um, like I said, great battle system, great boss fights. Uh, like, there's just hours and hours in this game with all the side quests and uh, what have you. Um, it's, it's absolutely brilliant, like, so much fun. It, it, like I said, it, it's how JRPG should be, you know. I just, I wish Square Enix would let level 5 make Final Fantasy now, because, God, this game's good. Like I said, I think it's the best JRPG of the generation, and it's, it's one of the best JRPGs I've ever played. It's absolutely amazing. Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. And for number three, Grand Theft Auto V. I mean, yeah, it's GTA. I mean, I've been playing this series since its beginning, since it was frigging 2D, top-down perspective. We've come a long way. It's a pretty impressive technical achievement, is this game. I mean, arguably, it's the best one yet. I mean, there's so many hours to be had in this game. Uh, just hours and hours of doing whatever the hell you want. So it makes it so much fun, you know? Um, you know great story missions, you know, the built-in out to play as three different characters was a really nice addition. Uh, I mean, Trevor is one of Rockstar's best creations ever. Guy's hilarious. 
Uh, you know, great graphics. I think the driving is the best it's ever been in the series. Um, you know, like I said, there's so much things to do from playing golf to tennis, swimming with sharks, to just going on a mask and killing everyone you goddamn see. I mean, yeah, so much fun. They brought back all the uh, customization options as well, which were missing from uh, uh, GTA 4. Um, yeah, and a huge world, absolutely huge world. I mean, it's Grand Theft Auto, it's Rockstar. It's enough said, really, that, isn't it? Amazing. And for number two. Booker, are you afraid of God? No. But I'm afraid of you. Bioshock Infinite. Wow, basically, it's the best way I can sum this up, just what an amazing game, what a friggin' experience. Now I know Bioshock Infinite, it's not for everybody, oh god no, it's not for everybody. I do think it falls under the, you either love it, or you hate it. And I fucking loved it, I mean, oh, absolutely amazing, everything about this game, man. The story, the art design, the characters, the music, the combat with all the different figures, just absolutely outstanding, I mean... Ken Levine, I think, is a goddamn genius. I love all the shot games, System Shot, Bioshock. They're absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, like I said, just an incredible experience. You know, the story was unbelievable. The ending, you know, I was like still thinking about it, like hours after I'd beat it, even freaking days, you know. It, it'll go down as one of my favourite games of all time. It, it's absolutely incredible. And an absolute huge breath of fresh air in the ever so goddamn stale first person shooter genre. Just something different, you know, not. Some crappy military shooter where things blowing up and shooting anything that by God moves. Just, just amazing. Just absolutely amazing. I could give this game infinite amounts of praise. But like I said, it's not for everyone. Um, but I mean, just from the, the second I was, you know, descending down into Colombia for the first time and with the circle being broken was playing, I was like, holy shit. I mean, something pretty goddamn special here. And oh God was I. Just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Bioshock Infinite. And finally, number one, my favourite game of the year. I mean, there's only really one thing left, right? What else could it be? Henry, no! Oh my god! The Last of Us. I mean, yeah, again, wow. You know, I could go on all day about how amazing this game is. Absolute masterpiece. Um, I mean, it was very close between this and Bioshock Infinite. You know, I kept changing my mind a few times, but in the end, I had to give it to this. Again, you know, just an incredible experience from start to finish. Absolutely amazing. Uh, probably the best game on PlayStation 3. Uh, and, you know, not just one of the best games of the generation, but one of the best games I ever played. Absolutely amazing. You know, the whole post-apocalyptic stuff, um, you know, it really does feel like the world has gone to shit and humanity's pretty much done for. I mean, you know, Joel and Ellie, amazing characters, amazing relationship between them, you know, watching them fight for survival. Um, you know, it's pretty dark, it's pretty damn depressing at times, sometimes it hits you pretty hard. I mean, right at the beginning, it's got one of the saddest video game deaths I've ever seen. Um, it's amazing, you know. Um, you know, brilliant gameplay from some of the crazy shooting scenes to running for your life to some of the stealth sections that are pretty intense. Outstanding graphics, I mean, absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> It's just, I could go on all day about how goddamn good this game is. Absolutely incredible. I mean, Naughty Dog, they're probably the best company going around now. These guys just get better and better. I mean, from Crash Bandicoot to Jack and Daxter to Uncharted to the goddamn Last of Us. God, they're amazing. I mean, they were a reason to own a PlayStation 3, and they're going to be a reason to own a PlayStation 4. Can you imagine what these guys are going to do on PS4? Unbelievable. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think The Last of Us is the best game they've done. And uh, God, how I would love a sequel. I really would. Just, just an amazing game. It really is, you know. Um, yeah, my uh, game of the year. So, there you go. There's my top 10 games of the year. Uh, do try to remember, they are all opinions. I know you're not allowed an opinion on the internet, but whatever. <laughs> I'll give you mine. So, um, yeah, feel free to, you know, let me know below what your favourite game of the year was leave your uh, top 10 list if you want uh, and you know thanks for watching guys and um, see you next time bring on 2014 so yeah later